365 with Daniel, your daily dose of inspiration. First of all, thank you for the chance and the time, Justin, oh, sure. uh, to get on the podcast. I'm excited to hear your opinion on the questions. And uh, the first one is, who do you admire the most and why? Um, yeah, I, I reviewed the list and I was thinking about it and I didn't come up with anyone good. And it's sort of like, I mean, there's there's a sort of category of answer of all sorts of people who've had to deal with challenges in their lives that I haven't. Uh, and I, it would be difficult to pick anyone, but um, any single person, but there's just so many people who are, uh, you know, starting out at such a disadvantage from society, you know, uh, keeping them uh, ultimately oppressed. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, so, I mean, you know, who, who could pick one person, uh, who's sort of had to overcome that and live a, a, a life that is productive and, and helping improve the world for everyone else. Uh, so I don't have, a, I don't have an answer for that. Cause it's like, it would be too, they're just, yeah, 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 there's no probably, you know, <laughs> a billion mm -hmm. people a out there who yeah. would qualify yeah, 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 yeah. and, and, uh, you know, I, I know, yeah, I, okay. it would be hard for me to sort of sitting where I'm sitting from such a place of privilege and, and, uh, having, you know, been so lucky, uh, to, to really, uh, there's so many people out there that I just am, you know, in awe of, of, uh, yeah. of how they, and I agree, I agree. And I also think it's the perspective of, uh, people that are not alive anymore, like all the our ancestors that helped building build the society where we are at. I mean, I guess we're living the best times as you more or less stole it. Yeah. 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 Some of us are, and then other people are yeah, like completely true. being, you know, uh, being chewed up by the machine of society. And, you know, there are people, uh, do, do you think like the future is, uh, I, I'm an optimist myself because we have the nuclear bombs for so long and we're still here you know <laughs> but uh, uh yeah but that's the, you know <laughs> a lot of that's luck too right you know just because uh I, yeah true but uh, you know i think true. i think i i'm an optimist too and i think that most people are um most people are really good and want or care about other people and want the best for other people uh the problem is is that there's a small percentage of people who are really jerks and those people, uh, because uh, because of that attitude, they end up having undue influence. I think over the course of everything. Uh, but yeah. there's actually an analogy I would look at is whereas, like, if you're in New York City, there's just tons of people around, uh, which makes it a very safe place to be. But if you do, if something happens, and let's say your wallet falls on the ground, you know, you might have a hundred people walk by it. And 98 of them are going to just be like, well, that's not my business. You know, that's someone, maybe that person will find their wallet again. But then, you know, those, the, the two people or, or the, you know, the one or two people who are like, oh, free wallet, I'm going to steal, I'm going to take that. And so as a result of that, you end up with, uh, you end up with uh, more likely to have a wallet get stolen or get taken off the ground because there's just so many people around that there's going to be the one yeah. person who takes it. Whereas, uh, you know, and then you can like, with game, you know, there's like a game theory thing where you could sort of be like, well, if the if the the people who are the honest people go and they pick it up and try to find a, a you know take it to a police station or something like that, then they help reduce the odds of someone just stealing it. But for the most part, the question is then, you know, do you want to get involved or do you want to just you know keep around your uh, mind your business? But anyway, mm -hmm. I, uh, that's a, yeah. that's a tangent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could be an entire subject. Like yeah. This. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's jump to the next sure, one. Sure, sure. Hmm, what is one habit that you adopted recently and that paid off in a good way? <laughs> well, not recently, but, you know, growing up, my uh, my dental care was not uh, what it mm. should have been. And so at some <laughs> point in my, you know, in, I guess in my late 20s or early 30s, I, I started taking it very seriously and flossing my teeth every day. And so I think that, you know, I still have all my teeth, so I'm doing, doing well there. Um, but growing up, I don't think I had the, the quite enough respect for what was necessary to, uh, you know, really sort of maintain that 
that aspect of your health. Um, that kind of discipline, yeah, more or less like the mornings and the, yeah, I guess it's also budget wise investment. Even if you invest like at 20, you will not like pay that much when you're older. Yeah. You, when you're young, you can get away with a lot of things and then it, eventually it starts catching up with you and then you're, but then it's too late and you don't know. So, I mean, I guess, you know, you could apply that to just taking care of yourself and to exercise and these things that, um, yeah, yeah. The things that you yeah, don't anyways, have to do sense. when you're you're young or the things that you do when you're young, but you don't realize you're doing. And then, you know, you, you grow old, 10, 10 years goes by and then you're like, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> what have I been doing? Uh, you know, mm. yeah. Pay, pay time. <laughs> cool. Uh, what is one moment when you felt most grateful? Um. No, uh, you know, there, there are times when I'm out actually just out doing things like out, out running in, in nature or, uh, out kayaking. Uh, like sometimes I'll be out, uh, in, in New York in the summer, I'll go kayaking in, on the Hudson river and just being out and being in, in just a this sort of, there's a certain state you get in, in nature. And, and, uh, and then it's just like, oh, this is really just nice to be alive that those sort of feelings. Um, hmm. And so I, I guess those are the moments that when I'm just out in nature and by myself and just appreciating the, the feeling of, of being alive. Awesome. Do you think like, uh, I haven't been to New York, but I've seen like quite a few movies and I've read some stuff about it. Did, do you think the city did a good job like with maintaining nature calls because you said you got the feeling in new york and i'm curious if it's um i think it's it is a challenge that the city uh does i i wouldn't say it does a good job but it is available but you have to actually seek it out and find it um, mm. it's definitely i would say there are other places that in the world that i've been to that are you know other big cities that make it more accessible uh, New York doesn't okay. make it particularly easy, no. But there okay. are, New York does a lot of good things with public spaces, for sure. Um, but nature is is a little more of a challenge. Um, that that would be my assessment. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, if you could teach or pass a skill to other people, what would that be? What would you choose? Uh, so this one was interesting because I was curious, do I have to have the skill or can I just, uh, you know, do uh, I automatically get the both, skill? But... Yeah. <laughs> uh, cause you yeah, know, like I point. would like to be able to teach other people Kung Fu cause then I would know Kung Fu <laughs> and that seems pretty cool. And I've been like a friend's studio here uh, is in the same building as a Kung Fu studio. And, and I would always go by on the elevator and I'd be like, I, sh I really should go go start taking classes there. And then I, I never have. And, uh, mm. and you know, it's a, I'm sure it's a big time investment and stuff. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess it depends. So yeah. like if you want to go competitive or just explore it a bit. Um, but as far as things like, uh, well, also humility would be a good one, you know, to be able to teach other people the skill of humility. <laughs> Uh, but that would also involve having to have it, which I guess I, yeah, no, I might. I guess I we might, all have a bit yeah. of stoic uh, in us, you know, like um, the stoicism. <laughs> okay, so this would be. What are you currently reading, if you're reading any uh, book? I'm, I'm not sure currently why. reading a book called uh, Venomous Lump Sucker. Hmm. And it's uh, it's a bit of sort of science fiction uh, and it takes place in the, I guess, probably the second half of the 21st century. So in the future. Okay. And uh, it's kind of a satirical uh, view on what happens with climate change and the extinction of species and how, uh, you know, right now we have like this whole system of like carbon credits where people try to sort of uh, reduce carbon output by sort of commoditizing the uh the reduction of carbon and it's basically in this future it's about uh, when species go extinct 
someone has to sort of pay a price for that. And, uh, and it's incredibly dysfunctional, uh, just in the same way that carbon credits are now. Um, and so it's sort of this, uh, there's this whole story that happens and it's, it's interesting, but it's also just this like sort of predictable future of how ridiculous, you know, the, the half-assed solutions to these really terrible problems that we're making for ourselves. Uh, and the, you know, like, oh, we'll just fix it by making it like, you know, the free market can sort this out. And, and it, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's pretty so good. So far, solution, but. See the solutions for big problems, Kaido. Well, yeah. Or, you know, solutions that people come up with that really, you know, when the people coming up with the solutions, it's really more about making money than it is about actually solving it. Making money wow. and saying, oh, well, we did this in order to fix this problem. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fix the problem. It just makes it worse. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, then everyone can say, well, it's the system that we have, and, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the system is us. So. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, it's fiction and it's entertaining. And, yeah. Uh, but it's also, you know. Uh, okay. Thought provoking, I guess. Yeah. What would you put on a flyer that would be seen by the entire world? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. It should be something that everyone could understand. So, I, you mm. know, like if I put it in English, yeah. then it's like, I mean, you know, English is pretty pervasive, but, uh, so maybe it would have to be like a picture, uh, you know, uh, how long would they see it for? Let's say, I don't know, one minute or how much one do minute. you want to? Yeah. How much brainwashing can you do in a minute? I don't know. Yeah. It's a good question. People might see it and be like, what is that? And then, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, it is a good, it's a good question. I, I'm curious. I haven't actually listened to your podcast, so I don't, I don't, no I don't really listen to podcasts. So I'm curious what other people's answers would be. Now I might have to go listen to, listen to them. Um, if we if we want we can skip and we can get back to it or we don't you know there's no problem. I might just be like yeah I really have no idea. Uh, okay. I would probably no you know pick some obscure reference to uh, a piece of literature and then uh, you know uh, let people just be people would see it and then they'd be like what is that and then move on that would be my my answer. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> Who is your favorite cartoon character and why? Um, you know, uh, I don't watch a lot of cartoons, uh, you know, and then the cartoons I do watch, like I, I've seen, you know, a lot of a good amount of the Simpsons and South Park, but mm -hmm. you know, like I can't really say I like any of the characters. So did you have any, uh, any, any in your childhood that was like, a... I, you know, if I'm, yeah, you know, I, I remember growing up watching the Smurfs and, uh, you know, things mm. like that. But I would pick, uh, you know, the show Sea Lab 2021. Which, I don't know this Which one. was on, it was on Adult Swim. And uh, it's a show where they took, I think they took footage from some other cartoon and then redubbed all the voices. And it's, it's pretty hilarious. So I would say, <laughs> uh, I recommend Sea Lab 2021 as a cartoon. And I would okay. probably pick Captain Murphy from it because he's just Captain such Murphy. an asshole. You made me curious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you the shot. <laughs> All right. Um, what fear did you overcome? And what did you learn from the experience? Hmm. I don't know. I mean... Um... I've kind of always been like uh, the kind of person who would do stupid things and not really try not to be afraid of them. But, um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've gotten to be a lot more comfortable with like speaking in front of people or performing in front of people. And, uh, you know, at one point I was very, very, very nervous to go and like play a show in a bar with a band and that sort of thing. And it, at this point, I like I'm still nervous, but like it, it feels like a good kind of nervous. Like I'm more excited about it instead of being like, "Oh, am I going to screw this up?" It's more like, "This is going to be fun," 
and uh, you know, and I don't want to screw it up, but I'm also like just wanting to make it the the thing that I can you know imagine it to be in my head and that sort of thing. So I would say just yeah, that feel the feeling of being the center of attention or partially the center of attention and, and being able to sort of uh, keep it composed for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you could meet one person that you haven't met, who would it be? Why? And what would you talk about? Um, I would probably want to meet Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I think, mm -hmm. I don't know what I would talk about with him. I'd probably just be about, you know, life and stuff. Um, but, you know, uh, he was, uh, I think, a very, uh, he seemed like just such a genuinely nice person, despite his, 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 his flaws. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, he's someone who I would like to have met. Cool. Cool. Um, what is one thing or something that most people learn only after it's too late um you know flossing i think would be <laughs> no, i i don't know what most people i you know i can only speak from my experience but uh yeah i mean i you know i think the the classic uh the classic uh cliche which is youth is wasted on the young i think that as every every year you get older you're like oh you know all this all these things that i didn't appreciate um you know which is a theme in all of my answers thus far so i apologize for that yeah. but but yeah no yeah, i think no that problem. that's that's like the standard thing which is that you know you uh as you get older it's like you you realize uh you become more aware of of the things that you uh, should have appreciated more and uh, but that's you know or a lot of people do or I do anyway um but that's i guess that's just part of life is reflecting back on your on your past and if tomorrow you could keep from your material stuff only what fits in a backpack what would you keep yeah i mean there's there's very <laughs> There's very little. I, I would be about sort of what is, you know, needed to survive. And I assume that's not really part of it, right? It's mm, Yeah, not really. Um, but we can focus on that. So I, I, as far as, you know, things that are important sentimentally or whatever, uh, yeah. there would be very little. I mean, I have a guitar that I've had for 22 years, uh, 21 years, something like that. And that wouldn't fit in the backpack, but I would like to keep that. Um, but, uh, there's things that are, you know, digital things, uh, that I've, you know, re recordings I've made and, uh, code that I've programmed and stuff like that. Those things would be the most, you know, the most meaningful, I think. Uh, but that's, I guess more, okay. of, yeah, those are the practical things. And then, you know, like, yeah, a toothbrush and uh, floss, you know. It's all about the teeth, uh, you know. Um, yeah. I will ask who is your dentist at the yeah, end. So, <laughs> shout out to Doctor Rotula. All right. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, if you could uh, know the absolute, absolute and total truth to one question, what question would you ask? Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I guess it would be like, what is the deal with the universe? Why does it exist? Where, you know, what is it? What is the ultimate the comp? Well, yeah, but also like how, you know, how does this thing even exist? Not even why, but like, you know, yeah, what's, what, <laughs> yeah how is is, is is a better question than than why you know yeah it's a good one yeah because like you know you see like the whole you know the, the the new space telescope and all these pictures of these galaxies from a few hundred million years after the universe is estimated to have begun and it's like already there's all this stuff and it's like well where did all this come from 
and where is it going? And, you know, yeah, just how is all of this even possible? And is, is this part of some larger, uh, you know, thing? And what's that look like? And, and so on. Yeah. Or is it all some sort of simulation or, you know. Yeah, I guess there are a few options. Yeah. That, that, but maybe. In answer to that, I, I don't think I can really comprehend. I wouldn't be able to understand yeah. it. But, you know, yeah. that yeah. That's the ultimate the question. question of life, the universe, and everything, I guess. Is the, I don't know if you've, uh, <laughs> if you've read The Hitchhiker's Here's Guide another. to the Galaxy. That's, you know. <laughs> Here's another ultimate question. Okay. What do you do when you can't focus? Um. Usually, either sleep or exercise. That would be, uh, or just relax too. But um, you know, uh, when you say exercise, I, I assume you you like running, or there, is it like a specific? Yeah, I like running and uh, and bicycling and pretty much. Yeah, hiking is really nice okay. too, and yeah. Okay, that would be. Hmm. But sleep is actually sleep is amazing, and uh, yeah, 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 you know, what do you do when you can't sleep? That's that's the worst question. So. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. How, how many hours do you go for? Or do you have like a regular amount? Or uh, for sleeping? For sleep. Uh, I mean, I guess I would say anywhere from seven, which is not enough, but it's like kind of enough to nine, which is probably about ideal. Yeah, nine's probably a good target for me. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Uh, eight, yeah. around eight. Eight's workable. Eight too. Yeah, I, I usually go before 11 to sleep and I usually wake at seven. Nice. Yeah, something like that. Um, what's the belief that you hold? which many people disagree with. Uh, I mean, I think it would be every belief that I have because I don't think there's anything that everyone can agree on, you know, like, uh, yeah, I feel, you know, even the things that I don't really, you know, like I eat meat and I feel bad about it. Like I feel bad, you know, that, it's, you feel bad? Like, well, I feel like, time? you know, if you eat, if you eat a, you know, you eat a, well, like goat is really good, but then you go see a baby goat and you're like, well, I can't be eating you. But then, you know, so you, what you do is, you know, you just sort of deal with these conflicting feelings. And I'm sure all of these feelings, someone's like, well, no, it's totally fine. Like, you know, that goat wouldn't exist if it wasn't for humans, you know, raising it and stuff like that. And, and then other people are like, hey, you should never eat a goat because, uh, you know, <laughs> Yes. That's just wrong. And so, you know, I think like any position you take, there's no, there's no position you can take about anything that, 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 uh, that a ton of people like, you know, a double digit percentage of the population will just completely disagree with you about. I mean, maybe it's like, you know, well, you know, killing other humans is bad, right? But then there are people yeah. who believe in capital punishment. So they're like, oh, okay, well, it's okay to do it if you think that they did a crime or something like that, you know? So. Yeah. There's, there are a lot of grays and not that many black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Last question. <laughs> Is there any exact method that leads us to what we want to dream about? Hmm. I don't know, but last night I watched uh, 28 Days Later for the first time in like 20 years, since it came out probably. And, uh, and I didn't dream about zombies, but I, I definitely had some like serious anxiety sleep. So I imagine the input that you, uh, you know, I imagine what you dream about is a function of the things that you've experienced recently. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I don't know if there's an exact method, but I, it seems like the, you know, that our dreams are a function of, of, uh, of the things that we take in. Hmm. So this like also applies on a macro version, let's say like the society where you're born and raised for the first years, they 
kind of determine like what you dream or want to achieve? Uh, well, did, I, there was, did you mean I, metaphorical I had, dream or actual like, dream? Uh, like actual dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I, I feel like uh, like like the background of this country like was the the Russians had like the communist system here and until the 90s it was present and for sure like there was a lack of freedom and i think like my generation that was born like immediately after had this kind of like gap of like uh not gap but like even like the people that lived uh, while they were there i i I think like one of their main values was freedom because they were lacking freedom you know so that's like like the macro of the question like Mm. Have, have you seen the, there's a TV show that was on Apple TV that's uh, called Severance? Uh, uh, that, is it like with the, the, the series with the jobs and when they were like, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't think it's so. A, yeah, it's about people who like have a part of their like brain turned off so that they have a separate personality or a separate consciousness oh, no, no. when I they go to work and it's interesting oh, yeah, yeah that's the yeah, one that's yeah. the one yeah, 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 yeah and it's interesting because it's i mean it's really it's a it's entertaining show but um it's interesting because it raises like you start thinking about all these questions about like you know how much your personality and your what is important to you and what you think about is is a function of your experiences and the things that you you know the inputs that are presented to your brain you know um i guess i would say uh, as far as the beliefs go that, you know, the question about what's a belief that other people disagree with or, or whatnot would be, yeah. you know, like one thing I think is that we are ultimately sort of machines. Our brains are machines, you know, that are mechanical, ultimately electromechanical or whatever. And so we come, you know, with all these genetic predispositions of, of what sort of things can be made out of our neurons in our brain. But our, our experiences and the things we hear and see and, our, you know, all these things that as we grow up do def- end up defining the circuitry in order to make us care about the things we care about, see, you know, uh, have the abilities that we have, um, have the shortcomings that we have. Those, all these things are sort of how we end up getting programmed. And so ultimately, I would say that we're a function of all of our inputs, the inputs being genetic of, of you know, all these predispositions, predispositions, but also the, the inputs of like all of our sensory experiences and the behavior learned by, you know, parents and other people around. And so I think, you know, do, I don't personally believe that we have souls, but I think that our our brains are these, this machine that ultimately gets programmed and have to have all these experiences. And, uh, and so, yeah, that, that show, that show is good because it's like you have people who are getting programmed anew and, you know, uh, which is an interesting thing because you have people working in an office who are effectively two years old, uh, you know, with, and they have Mm -hmm. all these, they have all these skills that, but they don't have like, there's the, you know, something missing that is just because they're so freshly created and it's obviously fiction. So, you know, but it's, it's, it's thought provoking in that respect. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And I guess it also goes back to like the, 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 the ultimate question, how, you know, because I think if we will ever have access to that info, we might like, it will be like, ah, okay, now I understand. Or, I, I don't know those aha moments. I still feel like it's... What do you mean? If we'll... You're saying about the question about the universe. Oh, that... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How, you know? And I think, like, if we ever have access to that info, it will be like, ah, okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, or it won't. Or it'll be completely, like... It'll be so uh, incomprehensible because, you know... Um, there's a there's a book called uh, it was written in like the 19th century called uh, Flatland, and uh, and it, okay. and it's fiction and it's about like it's essentially about these object you know these uh, creatures that are two dimensional shapes living in a two dimensional universe, and so you know it's like the, this the, I don't it's been decades since I've read it but like 
the triangles like walking along and then it sees the square or whatever, these sort of things. And, and they can't, they can't comprehend what a third dimension would look like because it just is, they're not made to understand it. They've, their existence is entirely in two dimensions. And so, you know, if, if there is something, some explanation of how this universe came to be, would we even be able to understand it? It, it might be so, uh, yeah. so out of our realm of, of what is comprehensible that we would just be like, that just sounds crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Like if you're, as you said, if you're built to see only that, you'll, you will not be able to comprehend. I think it would be very frustrating, like to have the answer and still like not make sense, you know, like it was fucking shit, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, uh, but you wouldn't even know it's the answer. You would like, you know, someone would give it to you and you'd be like, that's just, that's nonsense. <laughs> Are you messing with me? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But go, going back to like the, the last question, like uh, if there's an exact method that leads us to Con our controlling big your achievements dreams. or like, yeah, what do we want to, our biggest dreams, like what we want to have in life. Do you think there's? Oh, an so you mean uh, you mean metaphorical dreams then of like yeah, uh, yeah, the dreams yeah, yeah, yeah. of a, a method to get them or a method to control what yeah. you actually want? To to get to them, I guess. Like I don't know. I want to become a pilot or like to be on the moon or biggest dreams. You know, like crazy things. How do, oh, do you okay. think we can achieve them? See, I I thought from the beginning this was about like what the experiences that you have when you're sleeping, and uh, you know, sort of how you uh control your dreams you know what i mean that's the the real uh, realm of freud you know i think well that's the, 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 i i was taking the question literally of like you know and i'm sure mm -hmm. there are like you know lucid dreaming techniques for that but as far as you know making uh making your version of reality become the version you want it to be uh i don't i don't know i i, I wouldn't think there is but I guess if we knew the exact origins of, you know, or the, the how of the universe, then I suppose there, there might be. Mm. So we get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you, Justin. Uh, We're done. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>